won't let me get away from, and it's in Psalms 84. We'll begin reading verse number 10. The Bible says, For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. The Lord of hosts, O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusteth in thee. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the good singing. Thank you, Lord, for the good testimonies. Thank you for being a good God. Lord, all that we've heard and seen in these days, Lord, we should be revived. We should be submitted. We should be hungering and thirsting for the things of God. We should be ready to go out and tell this world about a wonderful Savior. Yet, Lord, in my spirit and in my heart, I feel there may be some that may have came to every service of camp meeting, but they've still yet to do business with the Lord. And God, I pray for them. Whatever it is that is holding them back, whatever wall, whatever uh, a thing that um, they are allowing to hinder them, I pray that, God, you would remove that even in this service. I pray the sweet Holy Spirit of God would speak to their hearts and help them, that, God, they might be found uh, in the center of the blessings of God. God, I do pray there be any amongst us tonight who are seeking answers from heaven. Lord, there was quite a few in camp meeting that testified that God spoke to their hearts and settled some things. God, if somebody tonight is seeking some help from the Lord, I pray, God, you dispatch it from glory. And God, I certainly pray, crowd this size, if there's someone here that doesn't know you, I pray tonight would be the night of their salvation. Now, Father, I'm an unworthy vessel. Lord, all the great preaching we've had this week, Lord, I'm unworthy to stand behind this sacred desk. But, Lord, I pray you'd use this unworthy vessel. And, God, you'd glorify your name. And you'd help your people. You'd bless your church. And, God, you'd send revival in these days. We'll bless you and praise you for it. Thank you for the sensitivity of these young people and their desire to do something for God. Lord, I pray for our young people that are going off to college. God, you'd protect them. And you'd help them. Help them to be a light, a witness. Pray for Zach's friends that God, they'd go to church with him, get born again. God, I just pray your perfect will be done. Now bless, and Father, we'll bless you for it, for it's in the holy name of Jesus we do pray. Amen. Amen. There's no way I'm going to get all this done tonight, but I'm going to give it my best shot, all right? I want you to notice some things as a way of introduction. I want you to notice, first of all, the beloved. Notice in verse number one of this great psalm, it says, How amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. That word amiable means beloved. He's not saying how lovely are thy tabernacles. Uh, he's saying how beloved uh, are thy tabernacles. Uh, deep down in the gable end of his soul, uh, he's longing uh, and he loves uh, the house of God so much, uh, but yet uh, he's not able to visit it like he wants to. We find he's talking about its beloved. Uh, I wonder... Uh, I know many of you love your church. I'm wondering if you could live your life without it. And he says, how beloved, how amiable are thy tabernacles. Look in verse number 2 and 3, we find his bemoaning. He says, my soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Yea, the sparrow hath found a house and the swallow a nest for herself, uh, where she may lay her young, even thine altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Uh, 
Many attribute this psalm to David when he's uh, fleeing from Saul and he's uh, dwelling in caves and he's going from place to place uh, and he's uh, separated from Jerusalem and he's longing and bemo bemoaning to go there and says, uh, even the sparrows have nests, Lord, but I can't get to your house. But most writers associate this psalm to the sons of Korah. Korah was uh, uh, the man uh, who murmured against Moses, uh, and God not only uh, 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 smote him, but God cursed his children and his children's children. Uh, and now here his children are outcasts, uh, and they're longing uh, uh, to be a part of the family of God and longing to get to the house of God, but they've been barred. Uh, He's bemoaning the house of God. I wonder when you're sick, or I wonder when you're away for a couple days if you begin to long and bemoan to get to come to the house of God. Notice, if you will, the blessed. The Bible says in verse 4, Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They will be still praising thee, say love. That means stop and think about that for a minute. You know the ones that are usually the quickest to praise God are the ones that usually stay around the house of God more. Mm -hmm. Notice verse 5. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, who, in whose heart uh, are the ways of them. Uh, those who trust in the strength of the Lord and uh, uh, those whose hearts have been sold out to the Lord, they're blessed. They're happy. Verse number 6 says, Who passing through the valley of Baca make it a well. The rain also filleth the pools. Uh, they go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appeareth before God. That valley of Baca was a desert place, but yet when the blessed are there, the pools are filled with water. The wells are springing forth because of the blessings of God. Those that put God first, those that fill their water pots to the brim, they're blessed. But those that God is an afterthought, seems like they're always struggling, and they're never happy. Mm -mm. Notice the beseeching in verse number 8. O Lord, God of hosts, uh, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Selah. Behold, O God, our shield, and look upon the face of thine anointing. He's beseeching, he's pleading with God, he's longing for God. I wonder how many of you sought God's face today. I know you prayed for camp meeting. I wonder how much prayer you gave before the services today. Hmm. Then we see the bodeman or his perspective in verse 10. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. You know, a day in the, being in the house of God is better than a thousand out there in the world. But I wonder if we really take that privilege for granted. Hmm? I wonder if we really wanted to be a doorkeeper in the house of God. You know, some people, they're not going to serve God unless they get glory for it. There's no glory being in a doorkeeper. We say, that's a whole lot better than dwelling in the tents of wickedness. Now notice the basis he puts all this on. Verse 11, For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusteth in thee. His reason for all that he's written is because he knows those that trust in the Lord are blessed. God is our son and shield. He does give grace and glory. I'm interested in verse number 10 where he says, For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I want to preach on this thought tonight. I want to preach on if this day was my last day. You know, every one of us have a day in our life that'll be our last day. Hmm? We were born into this world, we have a birthday, and God has set a number that will be our last day. 
and there's nobody in here that can promise me you'll be here tomorrow. We plan to be here tomorrow. We have uh, things on our agenda tomorrow, but we don't know if this will be our last day. I wonder if this is our last day. I wonder if this is the last time you ever get to church. Have you put everything into it? Now, uh, there was nobody who loved her church more or was more faithful than Miss May Perry. Miss May Perry uh, was so faithful, Miss Barb went to another church, she'd bring Miss May here and then have to go to her church and get back to pick up Miss May. Miss May was not going to miss her church. And finally, Miss Barb sat and came and sat in the service with her and she said, you know what, I kind of like this one better and she'd been here ever since. But Miss May never dreamed there'd come a day when she wouldn't physically be able to come back to church. What if this is the last day you get to come to church? Hmm. For some of us it may be. You never know. What if you go to heaven from this church service? Are you ready to meet the master? Or what if it's your last day and you don't know the master? What if today was our last day see we don't think in those terms you know we think about tomorrow and next week and next year and what we're going to do here and what we're going to do there there's nobody got a more full calendar than me and, and I, I think all the time what if God wants something else hmm? I know y'all plan on getting married but what if Jesus comes back you'll just have to be part of the marriage supper of the lambs all I can tell you huh you're going to have a marriage. It might just not be to each other. But what if today is your last day? We don't think about that. But tonight you're going to think about it. What if today is our last day? Huh? Can I say, me personally, if today, this day, is my last day, I'd want to first of all be found in my place. I don't want to be out of place. I want to be in my place. I want to be in the will of God. I want to be where God has placed me. I don't want to be somewhere else. I want to be in my place. Uh, and can I say, uh, you could never convince me in a million years, first of all, that God didn't save me. Uh, second of all, that God didn't call me to preach. I can show you uh, uh, where he did. Uh, uh, third of all, that God didn't call me to pastor. I can show you the verse where he called me to pastor. Uh, and fourth of all, that God didn't place me in this church to pastor this church. Uh, uh, I know uh, beyond a shadow of a doubt that I'm in my place. Uh, now, I'm not the biggest. I'm not the best. Uh, 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 but listen, I know I'm in my place. Uh, I'm not uh, 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 running somewhere else and looking somewhere else and torn about being somewhere else uh, I know where God has placed me uh, and I want to be in my place if this was my last day uh, I don't want to take time off I don't want to take the night off uh, I don't want to be somewhere that I shouldn't be uh, I want to be in my place uh, look around tonight uh, there are numerous people uh, that are members of the Emmanuel Baptist Church uh, 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 that say that God's placed them here uh, that this is where they're to serve God uh, but look around they're not here tonight uh, what if Jesus comes uh, what if this is their last day uh, and they've got to meet the Lord uh, uh, they're not in their place tonight uh, I want to be in my place now listen before you get to looking around and start poking fingers and judging people there are some reasons why people aren't in their place can I, can I say some people are not in their place because of providence the providence of God. God has providentially hindered them from being here. You say, what are you talking about? Miss May and her sickness can't be here. She would if she could. She can't. That is providence. Can't and choosing not are different. She can't be here. She would be here, but she can't be here because of sickness. Uh, some can't be here because they're the caretaker of somebody who is sick, who is ill. There are times when a, a spouse has to take care of their other spouse because of their sickness. Uh, maybe they're an invalid. Uh, maybe they don't have anybody to come and dispel them so they can come to the house of God. Uh, and because of that providence, they can't be here. 
Can I say there are some people who can't be here because they have to work. They don't choose to work. I know Christian's not here tonight because he's working. He's out protecting us and, you know, if one of you has a lead foot on the way out of here, he might uh, show up and see you. But anyway, he has to work. There are sometimes people have to work and they can't be here. And until God dispels that and gives them a time uh, and a position to where uh, they can work a shift uh, uh, and they can be in the house of God, uh, they are providentially hindered from being here. I know Brother Ron works, uh, can't be here on Wednesday night. And I know that. Uh, and God knows that and He understands that. Uh, uh, but I'm talking about those that could be in their place and some who can't. Uh, can I say there are some who can't because they truly are gone. They're on vacation. Brother Jim, Miss Judy's getting ready to go west. And they, they can't, you know, all of a sudden be in Phoenix and say, oh, it's church time, let's rush to church. And God understands that. When it's providential. When you can't. Now, there are some people that says I can't when they could. That's not providence. Some people are not here because their priorities are messed up. Mm -mm. Now, you might as well shake your head or do something because I'm going to preach it regardless tonight. I'm not intimidated by quietness. Uh, it just makes me get louder and meaner. But the truth of the matter is, some people's priorities are messed up. How many of you believe this is the Word of God? How many believe God said what He meant when what He said? Uh, uh, well, if God said it, shouldn't that settle it? What well, is what God said? Uh, Matthew six thirty one. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? Uh, for after all these things do the Gentiles seek. Uh, for your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. Uh, but seek ye first the kingdom of God uh, and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Uh, Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Uh, can I say there are some people uh, who have their priorities mixed up? Uh, uh, saying, well, uh, my child has an event and I've got to skip church. Uh, you're telling me your child's event is more important to G than Jesus. Uh, and you're also telling me uh, that if this day is my last day, I'd rather be in an event instead of in the house of God the psalmist said a day in thy courts is better than a thousand but you're saying a day in the thousand is better than a day in his courts priorities are mixed up huh I knew that'd be real real good well brother Doug I feel there you got a problem right there you never base your faith on feelings you base it on the facts of the word of God now, I understand well, there are days we don't feel good. I'm glad my salvation's not based on how I feel. But can I say there are a lot of times when I haven't felt good, but yet I still find myself in the house of God, and not only does God bless me, but I get to feel better. But there are a lot of people who have their priorities mixed up. Well, I, I've got this going on, that going on. I've heard everything. I've heard, well, preach, I had to get my grass cut. Well, so do I. But I'm not going to do it when it's church time. Amen. Preacher, I had family come in. Bring them to church with you. If not, show them where the remote is. Say, we'll be back after church. Uh, I'm talking about if this day's your last day. Do you want to meet God uh, watching TV or do you want to meet God being in His house? Amen. Being in your place? Hmm? Hmm? Yeah, preacher, I don't like that kind of preaching. That's because you're guilty. Hmm? You got priority issues. God help us. Hmm? Say, so, well, preacher, you know, I, I need my rest. Who do you think gives you strength in your body anyway? Hmm? Some are not in their place because of providence, others because of their priorities. Can I say there are some people not in their place because they're pouting? Well, Brother Doug picks on Brother Ed than he picks more than he picks on me. You're goofy. Well, Brother 
Doug asked Miss Veronica to sing, didn't ask me to sing. It's because your heart's not right. Uh, oh, brother, brother Doug shows somebody more attention than he does me. You know what the Bible says? You want to have friends, show yourself friendly. Instead of pout, why don't you get around and mingle and everything? Huh? I've heard people say, well, there's a lot of cliques in church. No, there's a lot of people just stick around the church more, and you don't show up for all the events. So, yeah, they get to know other people more than they know you because you're never around. Amen. So go suck on your thumb and pout and sit under a juniper tree, but I'm going to enjoy life. Sure. But if this is my last day, I don't want to meet God with my pooch mouth. I ain't even got to my second point. Some of you already tuned out. Wake up, Ed. That guy drove to Missouri and back yesterday and was in church this morning. Huh? I asked him today, did you get in that? Well, no. I don't know what kind of coffee Miss Vanessa's giving him, but it's working. And I say there's some that are not here because they've been pricked. Let me help you something. Let me pick on Brother Donald. He's all alone. Kids are sick. Miss Crystal's not here. Uh, you're not having marital problems, are you? Oh, she's sick too? Really? I knew that when she married you. No? Now listen. It's no justification. Jesus has never hurt anybody. But there are people out of their place tonight because somebody has hurt them. And a lot of times, it's somebody in the church that has hurt them. Hmm? That's sad. The house of God is supposed to be a family. The house of God is supposed to be a haven. It's supposed to be a refuge. It's supposed to be a place where we come and get some help. It's supposed to be a place where uh, uh, we belong. Huh? We're accepted in the beloved. And then somebody will be malicious to somebody. Hmm? Now, can I say, sometimes people prick people and, and they don't even know they've done it. How many times have you heard me say Miss Annette's famous quote? If you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. Anybody ever heard me say that? Amen. Put your hands up. I want to see them. Okay, I'm not lying then, right? Listen, I was going through that, and, you, and I appreciate everybody praying for me. I mean... It's been a week. I mean, by Friday, I felt like I'd preached a whole week's worth of revival, and I hadn't even preached at all. I mean, I was drained, just trying to get the mind of God and trying to conduct the services and, and, and be led of the Lord. But uh, this morning, I still had a bunch of things I was having to get done and everything, and I'm walking through, uh, uh, and I'm headed down to my office, uh, and uh, uh, somebody... Uh, I uh, came into uh, the back door and I heard somebody saying, I didn't recognize the voice, I don't know who said it, but I heard somebody make a snide comment that if the person coming in the door wouldn't have been in the right spirit, Brother Josh, it could have hurt them. As many times as I've said, you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. Now can I say that there's not a bigger smart aleck in the building than me. But when I just go in over here and ask him if he had marital problems, he knew that I love him and that I was just messing with him. You know why I didn't say that to somebody else? Because I know they might not be able to take it. You know why I know I can pick on the colonel? He's got broad shoulders. And to be honest with you, he's a glutton for punishment. He likes it. Huh? You don't know how many times he says, hey, thanks for picking on me. He's got tears in his eyes. You know, he's used to it. Vanessa beats up on him all the time with rolling pins, huh? But can I say, not everybody is a good smart aleck. Some people are trying to be funny, Brother Ron, but they're not funny. And not everybody gets other people's humor. Right. Where's my daughter-in-law? I love Miss Taya. She's my daughter-in-law. She'd been married, come tomorrow, three years. Been married into our family. She'd been a foster. But she's not a foster. She still don't know when we're joking or not. And we could make a lot 
lot of headway against her because she don't know. We could have her going out and looking for sky hooks and looking for doing shelf stretchers and all kinds. Because she don't, every now and then she'll say, are y'all joking? Because she just don't know. She wasn't raised as a foster. She's starting to learn. But what I'm trying to say is not everybody gets humor or they don't know if you're being funny. And when you say some things, you can hurt them. Can I say, other times you can ask people's questions that is no business of you to ask them a question. And they can get defensive and get hurt and say, I'm not going back to church because so-and-so is getting in my business. It's dangerous. You know what we're supposed to do? The Bible says, let all things be done unto edification. We're to build one another up, not tear one another down. Now, can I say that old fleshly nature likes to tear down? Mm. Takes a whole lot more to build up. And I understand in a bad moment, anybody can, you know, you're having a rough day, you could say something a little uh, uh, off color out of your normal character. Mm. You can be, be a little short with somebody or something. But can I say we ought to strive to bless people? Not hurt people. And I'm convinced all across this country there's people out of church tonight because they've been pricked. All I'm saying, if this day's my last day, I want to be in my place. Can I say there are some who are not in their place tonight because they're prodigals? They have just chosen to go after the world. They just think that the world's got the answers. Can I say there's a lot of young people that was raised in church, that was raised under good godly preaching, uh, that were raised by good luck godly parents, uh, and somewhere along the line uh, they bought into the devil's lie, your parents isn't cool, the preacher's crazy, uh, the world's got the answers, uh, and they're going after the world as hard and as fast as they can. Uh, it doesn't mean uh, you was a bad parent, doesn't mean the preacher was a bad preacher, doesn't mean the Sunday school teacher were bad teachers. Uh, we all have have a will uh, we all make choices and some people make the wrong choice they're out of their place can I say this day is my last day I want to be in my place can I say if this day is my last day I want to be faithful to pray and I don't only want to be found in my place I want to be faithful to pray I want to have a good prayer life because when I meet the Lord my prayer life has ended if I want to talk to him, I'll just talk to him. There is a privilege in prayer. There's something powerful in prayer. And can I say prayer is something that is lacking in most of our lives. And hey, if this day's my last day, I don't want to meet God and not have my prayer life right. I want to be faithful to pray. If this, this day's my last day, I want to be filled with praise. I don't want to meet God saying, boy, I wish I would have bragged on him more. I wish I'd have told others about him more. I wish I would have glorified him more. This day's my last day. I want to be filled with praise. Hmm? You know, it's a tragic thing to lose a loved one and regret you didn't tell them everything you should have told them while they were alive. It'd be a tragic thing if we leave this world and we leave praise undone I want to be filled with praise huh? can I say if this day is my last day I want to be firm in my position I don't want anybody to question what I believed you know why we did that series on Baptist distinctives I wanted you to know what the Bible said and I hope you know where I stand I don't want to back up on anything won't back up anything I've been preaching the same way for going on 37 years now and I'm not about to back up now I'm going to keep preaching uh, going to keep believing this book keep standing on the uh, uh, the faith and keep continue to let folks know what Jesus says uh, 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 hey uh, I know I can't do it like I used to can't jump as high can't shout as loud can't run as much uh, but I'm still giving it all I got I'm going to give it all I got till it's my last day uh, I'm going to be firm in my position uh, there's nothing I can't stand more than a flip flopper wishy-washy uh, here one day there another day uh, I want to be straight down the road uh, continually preaching the things I've preached on standing on the things I've stood on uh, I want to meet Jesus with no regrets uh, 
Paul said, as much as in me is, I'm ready to preach the gospel. I'm going to give it all I got, and I want to be firm in my position. Hmm? Uh, what's wrong with being the same? He's the same yesterday, today, forever. Huh? Huh? How many churches in our area no longer have a pulpit? How many churches in our area the preacher once had the Bible and now he don't have any, even have a good commentary? Uh, how many uh, 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 churches in our area don't have song books anymore and don't sing the old hymns? Uh, how many uh, uh, churches in our area uh, 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 the music doesn't sound like music? It sounds like something that used to have in a rock concert. Uh, how many churches have gone a different way? Uh, hey, uh, as long as God gives me breath and as long as I'm here, I'm sticking with the same stuff. Uh, hey, he's been good too good to me uh, I don't see any change in him and I'm not going to change uh, this is my last day I want to be firm in my position uh, and I say this if this day is my last day mm, I want to be on fire with passion for God mm. well I love that message on them two sticks I loved it man I loved that message <laughs> I knew he was going to blow up and blow out I've been around him too much huh that's why I want to make sure all that equipment was out of the way, huh? I want to have a fire of God burning in my soul. Uh, I want to have a passion for the Lord and the things of God. Uh, hey, that one preacher said it right. Uh, how come we can shout at a ball game, but we can't shout in the house of God? Uh, hey, uh, I've got news for you, neighbor. Uh, this is going to be the most quiet world you've ever been in. Uh, in hell, there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Uh, and in glory, there's shouting and praise unto the Lamb of God. Uh, and I want to get practiced up. I want to have a passion and a fire for God. Uh, I don't want to wait till I get to heaven to have a passion for Him. Can I say I love Him because He's first loved me? Can I say I've had people walk out on me only to find He's just walking in? Huh? And I said, he's never forsake me. Uh, he's always been there. Uh, no matter what time of day, uh, no matter what load I was carrying, uh, I could call on him and he was there. Uh, hey, uh, what a blessing to have him, not only as Lord and Savior. Uh, she sang that song, I know him as my father. Uh, I know him as my friend. Uh, hey, what a God is he. Uh, what's wrong with having a fire for the Lord Jesus Christ? Uh, this is my days, my last day. Listen, I want to have forsaken all pride and arrogance before God. Amen. I'm telling you, we heard some wonderful preaching, heard some wonderful singing, heard some wonderful testimonies, only a couple testimonies. What can I say? There were people sitting here, service after service after service, and never got broken before God. And I say, God is nigh them of a broken heart and save as such of a contrite spirit. I don't want to meet God full of pride and arrogance. I don't want to beat, meet God. Uh, Brother Clint, this is my last day, flipping my suspenders out and saying, bless God, I'm not going to change. I'm going to be uh, 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 nasty and mean, and I'm not going to get right with God. Hmm? I've seen it. People got an arrogant spirit about them, full of pride, won't get right with God. There's some of you who haven't been in the altar so long, you need a GPS to find it. And you need a new one, because them old ones get the directions wrong all the time. Mm. you know why you won't bow and get on the altar like some of these young people you're full of pride mm. listen it may not be your last day but I know God knows how to knock the props out from under your pride it'd be better for you to humble yourself before God than God humble you this is my last day I don't want to be full of pride and arrogance huh there is no righteousness in Doug Foster. All my righteousness is a preacher preach this morning's filthy rags. But I've been robed in his righteousness. I'm nothing. I'm a zero with the holes knocked out of it. He's everything. I don't want to be full of pride and arrogance. I've seen people sit in a Baptist church, their nose turned up so high that if it rained, they'd drown. Huh? 
You do know every one of us isn't worth the powder to take the blow away. We all deserve to be in hell. And I'm not going because of what Jesus did, not what I did. He died on the cross of Calvary, shed his blood, was buried, rose again according to scriptures, took the handwriting of ordinances under the law that were contrary to me, that would have put me in hell. He nailed them to his cross, and he made a way where an old Gentile dog like me could be born again. That's why I'm going to heaven. Why in the world do people get filled with pride? Because you start listening to the devil instead of listening to the Lord. My last day, I want to have forsaken all pride and arrogance. This is my last day. I want to be faultless in the path that I've trod. Uh, listen, it is a humbling thing, and it is in the forefront front of my mind. Even though I'm nothing, and I know I'm nothing, these young people look up to me. My family looks up to me. Some of you dear folks look up to me, and I don't want to disappoint you. Paul said, lest when I preach to others and I myself become a castaway. This is my last day. I want to be faultless in the paths that I've trod. Hmm? I'll say this. If this day is my last day, I want my family to have the same pursuit of God that I've had. I've seen a lot of people when a loved one passes away, all of a sudden their faithfulness is gone. That makes me think they were serving their family member, not God. There's a lot of people when a loved one passes away, they blame God. They get mad at God. Well, let me help you with something. Unless Jesus comes back, we're all going to die. One day is going to be your last day. So your family needs to know where you're headed. And they need to have the same pursuit so they can meet you there. I appreciate Brother Phil. Brother Phil lost a wife to cancer. He hadn't missed a beat. Brother Phil tell you the best friend he had in his world was his dad. His dad passed away. He hadn't missed a beat. His mom passed away. He hadn't missed a beat. Oh, he misses them. But he's been faithful. He's still shouting his lungs out in the house of God. I want my family to have the same pursuit for God that I have. This is my last day. This day is my last day. I don't want to fail in preaching the gospel to sinners. I want sinners to know that Jesus saves. Jesus saves. He'll save them if they'll turn to him and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I don't know when my last day will be. I'm planning on being here tomorrow. Planning on helping Naj move. Naj, if the Lord takes me home, just come get my truck and move yourself. You'll have to pry it away from Christian. He'll already be in it. I'm planning on being here tomorrow, Brother Ed, but I don't know. Friend, if this is your last day, How will you meet Jesus? Now we're all going to fall on our face before him. But I don't want to limp into heaven. I want to go out in a blaze of glory. I want to go out right. I wonder. This day's your last day. Will you be ashamed? Will he be ashamed of you? Or will you hear, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. One day is going to be your last day. It'll be today. Now, let me ask you this question. What did you do with camp meeting? I didn't ask you what camp meeting did for you. What did you do with it? It should have profoundly impacted you to love Jesus more and to live for Jesus more. Has it? The 
preacher, I'm so tired. How do you think Jesus felt carrying that cross down to Via Della Rosa? He didn't quit. Oh, I love that first message. When you get bit, don't quit. I love that message. I loved them all. Got help from all of them. There was one message a guy preached, and man, it was good. God showed me something while he was preaching. I'm thinking, he's missed it. Right there's the message, right there. And that message is what God's been burning my heart. I got some revivals coming up. I guarantee you somebody's going to hear that message. I can't get my mind wrapped around it. I'm not preaching what he preached. I'm preaching what he missed. Could I say? Camp meeting should have left some fire. Should have stoked something. Some of you look burnt out. What if today's your last day? He hmm? said, well, I'm young. I got plenty of time. Friend, go to the graveyard. There's a lot of young people buried out there. Hmm? Brother Greg Mill, Neal that preached the second message on Friday morning. And I say I had no idea. But he had a young daughter pass away. Her name was Amanda. God burdened his heart to start a grief ministry for people that lose children or people that lose loved ones. Then he had a burden to help people with their grief, help people that suffer depression, help people that are really in need. And God gave him 60 acres, and on November the 30th, which would have been Amanda's birthday, he's starting Amanda Ranch where anybody in any church that is suffering any grievous thing can go there at no cost and get help at that ranch. Huh? Had no idea. I've known that man for four years. Had no idea he lost a daughter. Can I say? Loss should not keep us from living for Christ. Amen. But today might be your last day. Young people, suffer fatalities young adults pass away middle aged people pass away old people pass away I don't know who God's speaking to tonight but today if this day was your last day it might not be your last day you may have years but you ought to live every day as if it's your last day and if this day was your last day are you ready to meet the Lord let's all stand Miss Renee just come to the piano please and play something there's already people in the altar if God spoke to your heart I wouldn't wait till Wednesday to get right I'd get right tonight if you're here tonight and you don't know the Lord, why don't you come? We'll get somebody to take a Bible and show you how you can be saved. But if you're a child of God, are you ready to meet Him? Folks are coming. While these folks are praying, let's pray. Father, you alone know when our last day will be. Help us to be ready to meet you. Lord, there may be somebody here tonight. Lord, needs to do business with the Lord. God, I pray, God, that they'd step out and do business with God. Lord, they don't even have to step out. They can do business with God wherever they are. God, if there's somebody here tonight lost, I pray you'd speak to their hearts. they get born again. But I pray we'd take this sobering thought tonight and God, we'd live every day as if it was our last day. We'd put you first in our life, not shuffle you into our schedule. God, we would live a life that is pleasing unto Christ. Lord, I pray that we wouldn't let anything or anyone hinder us from being sold out and submitted to Christ. Now, God, speak to hearts tonight. Thank you for these in the altar. You alone know why they're there. God, bless them and help them. God, speak through this invitation. Get glory to your name. We'll bless you for it in Jesus' name. Watch these. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? 
head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.